Hey, happy Monday, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. And you know what Mondays are all about, is us going inside the Weld app and answering questions. This week's question is a really awesome one. It's from Mr. Munish, and he's wondering about the 6010 whip and pause. What are some of the advantages to that whip and pause technique? And why is it only used for the 6010? Hey, we're gonna get dive all into the 6010 Electro today, talk about the whip and pause. Do you need it? Do you have to use it? What are some reasons? Let's do it. Now, before we even get to talking about how to weld with the 6010 or 8010 or other cellulose type rods, rutile, cellulose, sodium, what does all that mean? Where do you find it? How do you know? Well, let's first break down the rod itself. We have electrode, right? The E stands for the electrode. We have 6010, 60 being the tensile strength, 60,000 pounds per square inch of material. Then we have the one next, which means all position welding electrode. That means flat, horizontal, vertical, up and down for this 6010 electrode. And of course, overhead being that it's a fast freeze rod. And we'll get to that. And the zero, the one and zero, together will give us the polarity and some of the alloy compositions that are actually in the flux. So let's jump into what the, what the flux it is. Let's talk flux, guys. The 6010, 8010, 6011, they're all F3s as far as the F numbers. Now, F numbers, we can dive into that. That's a whole separate video. But these particular rods have a rutile acid-based flux. That's how they put the, the flux on it itself, as well as having a high cellulose and sodium base as far as the 6010. Not to get confused with the 6011, which is actually a higher potassium base instead of sodium. Now this changes as far as the polarity that these rods like to be run at, DCEP for 6010, and 6011 is able to run on DCEP or AC. Now these rods also put off a lot of spatter. The deep, deep, deep penetrating rods, and they're fast freezing. So those are some of the characteristics for it. They're great for running open roots, digging through paint, digging through rust, that kind of stuff. Open roots on industrial whatnots, piping, uphill, downhill, it doesn't matter. Whereas the 6011, I pretty much consider it a general purpose rod, uh, your farm rod, if you will. And it's not to get confused with your 7018, which is your high iron powder and low hydrogen rod. Now, we're getting way ahead of ourselves. We're just talking about the 6010. Let's get into some of the reason why you do this whip and pause. Now, because of all those flux characteristics, again, these rods have a lot of spatter. They're deep penetrating rods. The arc is really erratic. It's very violent, if you will. So the whip and pause technique is more of a recommendation as far as controlling your heat, especially when running open roots. If you have different fits, lands, whatever, and you get into a spot, that whip helps cool off. It's a fast freeze rod. So whatever is behind you, you can get in front of it, let that cool off and allow yourself to deposit metal a little bit more evenly or a little bit more controlled. Now I will say there is a difference between a hot and a cold whip. Now this might be my own terminology, I'm not sure, but I call a hot whip where you're staying further in your puddle or in your keyhole. Now, compared to an open root, compared to welding on plate or a fillet weld, your arc length is going to be changed. Uh, 6010, 8010, I think likes a longer arc length if you're not trying to put an open root in. So think about that as well. But a lot of that control has to do with your arc length and that whip coming in and out. All right, you can really make things wider by pulling a little bit farther away and it kind of sprays your weld on there or you can bury it in there and dig and grab, you know, dig through some metal and put roots in. Uh, but it is a fast freeze rod. That's why the whip and pause technique is there. So is that something that has to happen? No, you don't. You can do little half crescents, little zigzags and stuff and staying in your puddle. It's more of that hot whip technique where you're staying into your puddle. And is it a 6010 only technique as far as a whip and pause? Absolutely not. Now that cold whip where you're coming further out of your keyhole or further out of your puddle, I will say is a pretty much a 6010, 6011 sort of deal. Uh, as far as like a 7018 or even a 7024, you can get away with whip pattern, but you just can't extend yourself too far out of your puddle and then you get yourself into some trouble. But a whip and pause technique is not something that you have to do with the 6010 or 8010. And it's not something that 
you can't do with other rods, but you do have to stay within some parameters. So I hope that helped answer your question, my friend. Please guys, go to the Weld app. If you have any more questions, go in there, ask them. I'm gonna be there, I'm gonna be answering them myself as well as many others. This fella already had people answering his question before I could even get to it. So go check out the Weld app, guys. We're all there, we're all hanging out. It's great content and more to come. So we'll see you on the next one. Oh, hey, hey, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Before I go, I wanted to give you a quick welder tip. If you ever see this thing fingernailing where it's favoring one side of your bevel or the other, and that rod just doesn't seem to want to cooperate, the trick is dipping it in a little bit of water, getting that flux a little moist, and that thing runs pretty smooth. Don't take it from me. Ask a welder.